Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. Last week we made this concert ticket in Illustrator. We layered everything out. We even applied a rasterized texture on top to give it that extra retro feel. And today we're going to take this Illustrator file and save it as a Photoshop file, which is great if you like making templates or maybe you're really comfortable working in Illustrator but your client prefers a Photoshop file. This function enables you to still be able to design an Illustrator and deliver a Photoshop file without making it in Photoshop. So the first thing we need to do is in our Illustrator file we need to save it as a Photoshop file. So we do that by going File, Export, and in the Format uh, drop-down you want to make sure Photoshop is selected. And I like using artboards, so I always check artboards, and since we're only using one, one is fine. So hit export. When you get this dialog box, make sure CMYK is selected since this is a print piece. And since the standard print resolution is 300 ppi, make sure that your resolution is set to 300. You want your layers written, so make sure right layers is selected. Otherwise, you'll just get a flat file without being able to manipulate anything. And under anti-aliasing, we want our type optimized, so make sure that's selected, and then hit OK. Sometimes this prompt will come up, and that has to do with um, when this file is created. In order to most efficiently save it for size, sometimes you'll have layers um, on top of each other, like for the seat ribbon, you've got a shadow, you've got the ribbon, you've got text and then you've got another shadow. Sometimes it'll group things together but we can separate those layer in, later in Photoshop and I'll show you how to do that. So for now let's hit OK. And now we're going to open that file in Photoshop. So when this saves out, it actually saves the entire um, ticket, including the bleed that we put on it. If you'll remember, we defined a 1 8 inch bleed on all sides of our ticket. So in Photoshop, this is that whole artboard, including the bleed. So for your client, they're going to need to know where that bleed falls. So I like to use a plugin called Guide Guide, which I'll supply a link to below the video. Um, it's really useful. You don't have to drag all of your guides and try and line them up exactly. This does it. Um, perfectly and very quickly too. So 0.125 inches is the 1 8 inch bleed that we want on all sides and then I'm just gonna hit this button. And like magic we've got all of our our bleed defined um, and you can toggle this off and on by hitting command colon or control colon on your keyboard if you're on a PC. So when you first open up this Photoshop file, you'll notice our layers palette is a pretty big mess. And you never ever want to hand off a file um, that you just exported out of Illustrator as a Photoshop file and deliver to your client because it will be a mess and they will know that that's all you did. So we want to make sure that we clean this up and give it to them in the most beautiful way that we can possibly do it. So what I usually do is I hand off something that is in all folders, so it's really easy to navigate, and all of my layers are named. You'll notice like we've got clip group here, um, linked file here. We want to make sure all of these are labeled when we hand it off. It's just a really good habit to get into just for workflow in general, so you can always know what you're clicking on. So to begin the foldering process, let's go to the, I'm going to start at the bottom. But first I'm going to turn off my paper texture because we're going to do some color sampling as we work and that'll affect it. So we're going to turn that off for now. Um, coming right back down here to the background color, I'm going to put this in a group by hitting Command G or Control G if you're on a PC and I'm just going to name it background. And that's all done. For our angled lines, this clip group just means that, if you'll remember, we put this into a clipping mask when we first created it, and that's all that it's saying. Um, so I'm just, this is actually just in a group by itself, so I'm just going to merge this. And you can get rid of this mask if you want, or you can keep it. Um, it doesn't really matter because even if I turn it off, nothing changes. So for the sake of time, I'm just going to leave it there. And I'm going to label this angled lines. And moving on, our horizontal lines, we're going to do the exact same thing, just call this horizontal lines. And now we're to our row and seat. 
So there's a lot going on right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is separate my row and my seat. So I think this is this is the top shadow of row and then this is the shadow for seat. So that's where it ends. So I'm gonna group all these and call it row ribbon. And I'm gonna group all these and call it seat ribbon. So I'm gonna open row ribbon right back up again. And this is the shadow on it, which since this is going to be a Photoshop file to keep it more authentic, you should really, you could leave it as a shape, but you would never make it as a shape if you created this in Photoshop. You would define it as a layer style. So I'm going to turn this off and I'm going to double click on this ribbon and I'm going to set a drop shadow to mimic um, what that, that was. So in order to um, make it not blurry anymore, we're going to reduce our size to zero and we're going to define our distance at eight. And for this color, we're going to click on the color and eyedropper the gray and hit OK and OK again. And now we can just throw away uh, that fake shadow. And now we have the text and we have the circle um, that goes underneath eight. So I'm just going to call that layer circle. And when I'm putting a file together, I like all of my layers to be read the way you see them visually. Um, so I'm going to just drag row above eight and then eight circle. And then we've got, um, this is our ribbon and this is our top shadow. And there we go. So the row ribbon is all set and we're going to use the same exact layer style on the seat ribbon. So I'm just going to right click, um, and hit copy layer style, close this up. Under seat ribbon, I'm going to get rid of the, that shadow again. And on the actual ribbon, which I'm going to name right now, I'm going to right click and hit paste layer style. And there we go. Um, and then reorder these. This is going to be the circle and the top shadow. Okay, so that's all done. So. If you remember the, the prompt that we got that said some layers had been flattened, here's an example. We've got this big ribbon and then we've got this tiny ribbon that were separated on our Illustrator file, but now they're put together. And we could separate them if we wanted to. We could just cut them out and paste them again. Um, but I'm, I'm really fine with leaving them because I don't need them to, um, to be moved. So I'm just going to call this ribbons. And now for the perforation, that too got grouped together, so they, um, they're all in one layer. If I wanted to get rid of this, I would grab my rectangular marquee tool by hitting M on my keyboard, and I would just drag out a marquee, um, and then I would hit Command X, and then Command V, and then drag it over. And if you look in um, the layers palette, you'll see now I've got them on separate layers. So you can do that if I wanted to. Um, I don't really need them to be separate right now, so I'm just going to leave them on one and I'm going to put them in a folder. Now let's go to our, our text layer. Um, so there's, there's two groups going on right here, so let's take care of that. This first group is our Ben Howard and you'll notice it's got another one of those faux shadows. So I'm going to delete the shadow again and I'm going to define it as the layer style. Double click, hit drop shadow. Reduce the size to zero so you don't have any blur. And the distance I'm going to make 10. And I need to make sure the color is this gray again. So I'm going to eyedropper the gray. Hit OK. Hit OK again. And now we don't need it in a group anymore. So if I just come to the group and right click, I can hit ungroup layers. And now it's just a layer on its own. So this next group is our event date. So we're going to toggle this down. This first one is our month, and then we have our day, and then our year. And then to be consistent, I'm going to um, drag this in the right order that you'd read it. So I'm going to drag the month above the year and the day above the year. So now they read all right. And now to make sure um, within them everything's labeled, so we need to label this circle. And the same for day and year. And then we're just going to call this event date. Okay, 
So now I'm just going to order these in the way that you see it. So we're going to do live in concert and then the event date and then Ben Howard opening with Sunshine Sisters True Wireless Amphitheater in Atlanta, Georgia. So now that's all in order. Now we're the last step is the paper texture and you can either um, place the texture in again if you want to reposition it or add anything extra to it. Um, but I'm just going to keep it the way it is. So I'm going to turn that back on and you'll notice again we've got um, this group, this clip group. So I'm just going to select it and hit merge. And then we're going to have to um, set the blend mode to multiply one more time. And we're going to call this, oops, we're going to call this texture. We're going to close that up and we're all set. This is exactly how I would hand this file off. So I'm going to hit Command S to save it or Control S if you're on a PC. And that it's that easy. Um, just make sure that if you're ever exporting a PSD out of Illustrator that you always go into your Photoshop file and do this with the layers because I guarantee it will be a mess every single time and you'll have to go in and clean it up. And the client will thank you for having a really pretty file. So thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave it in the comments section. And yeah, that's it.